Let's look at how to create our own custom textures in Corel Painter. We can make a texture from a new canvas, or by bringing in a pre-existing image, like a photograph or an illustration. Let's start by creating a new canvas. When working with textures, you will often need to scale the textures up so they cover the entire canvas. Therefore, it's important to keep in mind that the dimensions you choose for your texture are going to affect whether or not you have to transform the texture to make it fit. If you create a texture that is too small, you're going to have to scale it up often. But if you make it too large, that's going to require a larger file size, which is going to bloat your workspace because that's where textures are stored. Many of the default textures are around 1600 pixels wide. Some textures are square and others are landscape in orientation. I'll choose 2400 by 2400 so I can use it on both wide and square canvases. The resolution does not matter because we're only measuring the texture in pixels. Now that I have a canvas to paint on, I'll select the simulated wood grain paper and create a weathered looking texture using the Sponge G brush, pepper spray, and the flat captured brush. The textures that you create can support transparency. To add transparent areas, disable the canvas layer and erase or use a mask. To turn this artwork into a texture, we'll need to perform a select all, then choose capture texture from the bottom of the textures panel. I'll save the texture as weathered, and now the custom texture appears in the textures library. I would recommend placing your textures into a custom library so that you can export it to back up the textures. I'll return to the texture painting template and select the car layer. Then I'll choose the texture 2.5D soft brush. I'll reset the brush and paint some of my weathered texture onto the car. It looks like it's adding mud or rust to the surface of the car. If you're satisfied with your texture, you can save the original. If not, press Control tab to go back to your original working copy of the texture and modify it as needed. You will need to delete the old texture and recapture the new one. You can save your original by going to File, Save As. And if it has proprietary layers, you'll want to save it as a painter riff. Otherwise, save it as a PSD, PNG, or TIFF. If the quality of the texture is not important, you can make the file size smaller by saving as a JPEG. I don't need to keep these demonstration textures, so I'll delete them from the textures library. In addition to capturing a texture, you can also import a texture from an image file. From the textures panel, I'll choose import texture. Then I'll navigate to an image called textures driftwood 2. The image appears as a texture in the textures panel with a name that is based on the file name of the imported image. This texture has been imported at full size, so it's 4,600 pixels wide. That's probably a lot larger than is necessary, and that additional information will make your workspace file larger than it needs to be. So it would be a good idea to make smaller copies of large images before you import them. I'll transform the texture to scale it down so it fits on the canvas. Once I apply the transformation, I'll show the visibility of it, and I can use the Save As button to save a copy of the transformed texture. This is an easy way to make a smaller copy of a large image, though that image will only be available in your workspace. If I paint on the car and background, I get a really natural looking cracked effect. This image happens to be black and white, but you can import color images to create textures from as well. The textures that you import can also support transparency, so I can bring in textures that do not have a background. You can also capture a texture using a selection. This can be useful if you only want part of an image. I'll open the textures Driftwood 2 image separately in Corel Painter, and then I'll use the rectangular selection tool to draw a selection over the area I want to use as my texture. When I choose Capture Texture from the bottom of the Textures panel, the cropped section of the image appears in the texture library. Once you've created some textures, you can manage them with the icon in the bottom left of the Textures panel. As I mentioned earlier, it would be a good idea to create your own texture library. I'll call this Textures AR. When you create a new library, it automatically adds the currently selected texture to it. You can drag textures between libraries, rearrange them, and delete them. I can also use the Manage Libraries menu to import texture libraries, export texture libraries, remove libraries, and I can change the size of the icons in the texture library or view them as a list. I can also hide and show texture libraries if I don't want them to be visible in this panel. I'll hide texture synthesis and photo art. I can also restore my default texture library and show any hidden textures. There are a few more options hiding at the bottom of the panel. We can export the selected texture to a layer. That dumps the texture to a layer, and we can use it just like a placed image. 
The final button at the bottom of the textures panel is to embed the texture as a clone source image. We'll discuss this later. We can also click on the top right of the textures panel to get the options menu, which has a lot of the options found in the buttons below. But there are a few unique options to show and hide the texture previews in the panel, or show and hide the buttons in the panel. You can also capture an icon for a custom texture. First, export that texture to a layer. Then, hold Shift to make a square selection with the rectangular selection tool in the area that you want to use as your icon. Next, right-click the texture you want to apply the icon to, and choose Capture Icon. I'll deselect that selection. When you are ready to export your textures, one way to do it is to export your texture library. That will export all the textures together. But you could also save the individual textures as files on your computer, and then just import them as needed, especially if they're textures that you don't use on a regular basis. When you're done with the texture, just delete it from the textures library to free up your workspace. The final texture painting panel is Texture Synthesis. This feature can make a small texture larger by repeating elements in the texture. You can manage the creation of the texture synthesis by selecting a preset texture, or by making a selection in your document of a texture that you'd like to repeat. Depending on what you choose for these settings, you can create a repeating pattern on your canvas, or you can send that repeating pattern to the texture library so you can reuse it. This is kind of a specialty feature, so if you're interested in learning more, you can check out my YouTube video about texture synthesis.